Shabbat Shalom. Um, thanks, Rosie, for insightful words. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's good you, you said what you said because it, it ties very well with what I'm, I've prepared based on the today's Torah portion, which is Shmini and, of course, means eight. And so it, like, it screams at you. This is the Torah portion that starts like it's called by the number. So immediately the question would be, why did the sages decide to put the number in the head in, at the title of the Torah portion? Because we know the divisions are um, they're from the rabbis. And this the, and it starts with the eighth day. What was the eighth day? The eighth day was the uh, end of the eight days of inauguration of the priests and the temple for the beginning of the service. This is when the temple was first... Um, in, um, put to service when um, the priests are finally ready for for work, and the um, and the, um, the sacrifice could be run. So the the number eight in the Torah numbers they're significant. And number eight in the Torah is you know I suppose it. it um, symbolizes holiness. And how so? Well, we have eight, you know, circles of holiness. You know, that's not the Torah, but that can be easily deduced from the place of the Holy of Holies in, uh, in the Jewish worldview. Because, you know, if you look at the holiness of a place, the least holy is the whole world, the universe. I mean, the whole earth is like the most common. Then land of Israel is holier. Then uh, Jerusalem is holier of the land of Israel. Then the Temple Mount is the holiest of Jerusalem. And then the outer court, and then the inner court, and then the holy place, and then the Holy of Holies. Total of eight. It's like eight concentric circles of holiness. And the Holy of Holies is the holiest of places. And that's what it's called, Holy of Holies, right? Um, and when the Holy of Holies, when, when the temple is enacted, what happens, fire comes down and consumes the sacrifice. We didn't get to that part, but what happens when they bring all the sacrifices, fire breaks out and burns up the sacrifices and people are really happy. Of course, later on, the Nadav and Avihu, the two sons of Aaron, they come in the same way, fire breaks out and consumes them. The same way it consumes sacrifice, consumes them too. So it's like an equal opportunity fire. That pretty much it consumes everything, it comes close. But... Um, in a way, you know, they have, um, you know, they wanted to bring the Torah, they wanted to bring the, 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 the uh, incense offering, but they're consumed because the reason, official reason Torah gives, they brought Erzara. They brought the fire that's, that's like a, um, um, uh, strange. A zara means, yeah, stranger, like uh, other, another, uh, you know, a common term for idolatry is Avodah zara. Avodah means work, zara means strange, so strange work, like, you know, which not, it's, it's a work for, <laughs> work for strangers, basically. Instead of working for whoever you're supposed to work, you work for strangers. And that's, that's the idol worship, that's the idolatry, the official term for idolatry. Um, so, they, the, the, so the sages debate what was their problem, because they brought the strange fire. What constitutes strange fire? The fact that, I mean, they, were they in, in an improper state when they brought it? Because fire is fire. And it didn't say, it didn't say that the, the mixture was, was wrong. It wasn't it like, how was it strange? In which way was the fire strange? Fire is fire, right? Um, or perhaps then, they, then uh, there is a, a, a theory that they were drunk with wine. That's why what, what, what follows next is the prohibition for the priests to drink the wine. Um, it didn't say that they were drunk, but the fact that the next thing that follows is that priests cannot be drunk, uh, and then sages made a conclusion that they probably were, were, were intoxicated when they brought, you know, and the priests cannot drink and drive. <laughs> um, but, um, and, and, and perhaps this is why when Yeshua says to the disciples at the Seder, he says, I will not drink of, this, of, the, of the fruit of the wine until I am uh, with, in, in, uh, drink the new wine in the kingdom, Perhaps because he assumes now priestly functions, 
in the heaven to enter the tabernacle and serves in the tabernacle as a priest. Therefore, he doesn't drink wine anymore in that, in that, in that capacity, although we have no idea what that even means to drink wine in heaven, right? But, but perhaps this is it's probably it's a heavenly wine. Uh, but, you know, we, we don't know what it is, but perhaps it's, it's symbolic of that. I don't know. It's speculation. Uh, but the, the, this number eight, literally, shmone, Shmone uh, means eight, but also she, it means shaman. Shaman means oil, right? Uh, and so oil is, means power, uh, power like um, fuel, <laughs> in, 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 in the terms of fuel. Like you, you have fuel in order to power things. You, you burn fuel. Oil is the most like, you know, like original kind of a fuel uh, type of a, a substance. And, uh, you know, it is symbolic of the spirit of God. Oil is symbolic of the Spirit of God because the one who's anointed with oil is anointed with the Spirit of God. We know that it's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a very common symbolism. And when uh, Yeshua tells the disciples that they, they will receive the Spirit of God, he tells them in, in, the, in the verse 8, by the way, of, of chapter 1 of Acts, he says, you will receive power. It's describing the Spirit of God, says you will receive the power. So the Spirit of God, is the, the oil is symbolic of the Spirit of God, which is the power from God. Um, you know, and when, when, when it's power and power's on, you don't, you don't touch the wire that's not isolated. You have to <laughs> observe the, sa the, safety, the safety mechanism. And, you know, the sons of Aaron, they, they burn up, but where did God say that they couldn't do it? It's like they brought strange fire, and then Moses comes to Aaron, tries to comfort him or comforts him, and he says, this is what I, this is what I said well, this is what the Lord said, through those closest to me, I will be sanctified. Where did God say that? There is no verse like that before, that God says, through those closest to me, I'll be sanctified. And commentaries come and say, well, Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says, that's the Exodus 19, where God says, to the, if the priests will not, it's Exodus 19, 22, it says, even the priests that come near need to sanctify themselves. Otherwise, the, the plague will break out against them if they don't sanctify themselves. And that's what Rosie was saying about sanctification, right? The, this, this whole ceremony of the priest, the eight days of, of the priest dedication, was supposed to be a sanctification time. But there's to be, for them to be sanctified, for them to be separated, for them to be, uh, you know, because Kedusha, what is Kedusha? Kedusha, holiness, uh, you know, when we think in English holiness, we think someone who is, who is really, like, pure, who is un, you know un, unblemished? Who doesn't sin? You know, a sinless person. You know, and it means all that, yes. But what it what it accomplishes when somebody's like that, it accomplishes because holiness means separation, it means set apart, right? Like uh, the engagement in the ancient Israel was called kedushin. The, the marriage was divided into two parts: was kedushin and nesuin. Kedushin was the engagement part when the uh, bride is separated unto the groom. It means she is. Uh, dedicated to, to that groom and, and cannot uh, get married to anyone else. Um, they, are not, they have not consummated the marriage yet, however, but they already, they already kind of, they, they're, they're separated, for, they, they're uh, set apart for, for, for each other already, right? So there's no, there's no other, there cannot be any other there in that, in that relationship. So, so oh, <laughs> sanctification, holiness, is the absence of another. And that's why it's interesting in, in the schema of the Jewish holidays, Shmini Atzeret, the eighth day after Sukkot, if Sukkot is symbolic of the seven-day wedding celebration, then what comes after the seven-day wedding is intimacy, is, them, is the husband and wife being secluded together in the bridal chamber, right, which is the Holy of Holies. And what follows, what is in the bridal chamber, is the ark, and the ark is, if the Holy of Holies is eight, then the ark is nine. And the nine is gestation period. And inside the ark is the child, is the Ten Commandments, is the Word of God, is the Torah made flesh, is the Mashiach. And that's the ten. The Word of God the son of God. You know, I heard it said, if Yeshua is the son of God, means he's not God. He's the son of God. But, like, 
if your father is at Cohen, it's like this, you know, when the Jewish guy comes to, to you know, to um, with the Orthodox rabbi, he says, you know, uh, can you make me a call and I'll give you, like, you know, whatever you charge. And the, the Orthodox the rabbi says, you know, forget it, go away. Stupid, right? He goes to the conservative, he says the same thing. The conservative rabbi says, eh, you know, nah, can't do that, sorry, it's, like, silly. Right? He goes to the reform rabbi, he says, make me a call and I'll give you $1,000. He says, okay, fine, I'll make you a call. Not to, not to, it's, it's just a joke, right? And the reformer says, says, yeah, okay, sure, I'll make it, but why do you want to be a Kohen? He says, my, my, my grandpa was a Kohen, my dad was a Kohen, I want to be a Kohen too. <laughs> it's, very, it's a very, very well-known joke. If the father is a Kohen, who is the son? The son is a Kohen automatically. You know, and that's, that's what happens. If, if, if the father is God, then, then, then the son is God. Same way. And... <laughs> It says in Isaiah 42, 8, it says, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I will not give to another. And then again, it says in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, it says, I was watching in the night watches. Behold, one like the Son of Man, coming in clouds of heaven, he approached the engine of days and brought in his presence dominion, glory. Sovereignty were given to him, and all peoples, nations, and languages to serve him. His dominion is everlasting dominion that will never, be pa never pass away. His kingdom is the one that will never be destroyed. If God does not give his glory to another, to Zar, to another one, then how is it that he's giving glory to the Son of Man? Son of Man is not another. That why Son of Man is God. But we are also sons of God, aren't we? It says, or daughters, <laughs> it says Romans 8, So then, brothers and sisters, we do not owe anything to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, then you must die. But if by the Ruach, by the Spirit, you put to death de deeds of the body, you shall live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you do not receive the spirit of slavery to fall again into fear. Rather, you receive the spirit of adoption. By whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Ruach himself bears witness to our spirit that we are children of God. If children, heirs, heirs of God, John, heirs of Messiah. If indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. We are the children of God, but we are children of God by adoption. Amen. We are not the same in that respect the adopted kids they have the same rights but the adopted son of a Cohen is not a Cohen that's the difference of Yeshua being unique and being God but nevertheless we receive the same rights with the same ruach of, of adoption which we cry Abba Father but if we live according to the deeds of the flesh we will die the sons of Aaron, the Davan of Ichu, they brought something else. They brought out of their flesh and they died. They, they brought of their own initiative, of their own desires, their own plans and prospects, or whatever they had in mind. It was their initiative. It was, came from them. They didn't come from God and they couldn't stand because God does not tolerate another. If I am another in my relationship with God, if my ego is another, that's idolatry and that will not stand and that has to burn up. It has to be purified. Relationship with God does not suffer another. It says songs, Song of Songs, eight chapters, by the way, interestingly enough. <laughs> eight, the number of holy Song of Songs, Shira Shirim, eight chapters, chapter eight, verse six, it says, Sameni kachotam al libecha, kachotam al zroecha, ki azaka maveda chava, kashaka sheolkina, rishpat rishfei esh shulchevet ya. It says that, it says that the, place me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. Because uh, strong as death is love and harsh as grave is jealousy. It's coals a coals of fire, the all-consuming fire of God. Chatom, the seal, chet, eight. It's chatom, the word chatom starts with chet, eight. Set apart, being branded as God's property. Flame of fire that consumes every mixture that's impure. Pure. Pur. 
poor in Greek is fire. That's why pyrotechnic. I think that's why purity is from fire, because fire burns up all the imperfections and all the alloys and just leaves purity. It's interesting that in Aramaic, puraya uh, means bed. Um, and Purim, the festival of Purim, Purs means lots, of course, but in Aramaic, Puraya is the bed that was the downfall of Haman, who fell in the bed of Esther when the king saw it and said, to, <laughs> done with you. The bed was his downfall, the bed that has to be, by the way, pure. The revelation that has 22 chapters, 22 chapters parallel of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. That's why it's from, Aleph to, from Alpha to Omega. I'm the Alpha to and Omega, the beginning and the end, first and the last. 22 chapters. Chapter 8 says what? Chapter 8, you know, it says, Now when the land opened the seventh seal. Seventh seal. <laughs> oh, by the way, the... Uh, when the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in the heaven about half an hour. And what happened after seven? Eight. Then I saw seven angels who stand before God with seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel came, stood at the altar holding golden incense burner. He was given much incense to offer up along the prayers of the Kedoshim upon the golden altar before the throne. Like the Dava and the Vichu, they brought incense, only that was a four and one. In this case, the prayers of the saints would not, were not the foreign fire and the incense of the angel. They could be brought into the temple. And his smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints, of the Kedoshim, the one who were sanctified, the Kedoshim, that rose before God the, from the angel's hand. The angel took the incense burner, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were clashes of thunder, rumbling, flashes of lightning, and earthquakes. The seal that the, that, the lamb, that the lamb opened, who was worthy to open the scroll and the seven seals, that seal, which seal? Daniel's seal, who was commanded to close, to seal up the book until the very end. It says, but you, Daniel, close up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many will run back and forth and knowledge will increase, says God, says God or the angel to Daniel in chapter 12, to seal that book. And it says, many will be purified later on in chapter 10. Mary, many will be purified with what? With fire. Made spotless and refined. But the wicked would act wickedly. None of the wicked will understand. But the wise will understand. The fire that will purify the earth and heal the righteous and burn the wicked. In the Hanukkah song, the Maus Surin or Maus Surish, there is this famous Hanukkah song. It has more stanzas in it. In the one, not the last, one before last stanza, there is a verse that says, The um, uh, sons of uh, the sons of uh, understanding, uh, eight days they established song and uh, celebration or something, the song and uh, melodies, right? The Bnei Bina, the children of understanding, those are the Maccabees, right? Another name for the Maccabees, Hashmonaim, the Hasmonia, Hashmonaim, Shmone, eight, right? Eight days of Hanukkah when oil burned for eight days. And uh, they established that, that festival when the earth, to, to, do, to, to do what? They were doing for what we were doing for eight days of Hanukkah. Yeah, they were celebrated Sukkot late, but there were eight days. They were purifying the temple, they were de rededicating the temple. They were rededicating the temple for the service so that, again, it can be, it can be used. So, again, it can be, <laughs> the holiness can, again, enter the children of Israel. They are the men of understanding. That's, that's why the Maccabees, they applied the book of Daniel to themselves. That's why the, they, they saw the abomination of desolation as Antiochus' idol. So they applied the book of Daniel to themselves a lot. They called themselves Bnei Binah. That's why they were the sons of understanding. That's reference to Daniel chapter 12, verse 10, those who have understanding. So the, the, they have understanding. And what it, it says in Ephesians 5, 17, for this reason, don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't drink, be drunk on wine. 
like Nadav and Avihu, perhaps, line 70 is numerical value. It's a yud yud nun, numerical value 70. Like, and that's not eight, that's not 80, <laughs> it's one before. Don't be drunk with wine, which is reckless. Instead, be filled with eight, with the ruach of, with, with the ruach. Don't be, seven is this world. At the end of the day, seven is only this world. It's the seven days of creation. It's not necessarily like the, yeah, it's not bad, but it's just this world. It doesn't translate into, it has to translate into the aid. It has to translate across the border in the spiritual. For what? What's the purpose? The purpose is, is love. Hebrews 12, 14 says, Pursue shalom with everyone and holiness with while, without which no one will see God. Why do you want to see God? What do you do when you see God? When you see God... Nothing else exists. It's the, t it's, the, it's the moment of complete intimacy, but there's only God and nothing else. Without holiness, that is impossible. And that is the moment of love. And love never fails. It says, their prophecies, they'll pass away. The tongues, they'll cease. Knowledge, you'll pass away. For we know in part, prophesy in part, when that which is perfect has come, then that which is partial shall pass away. When I was a child, spoke like a child, thought like a child, reasoned like a child. Like no one wants to marry a child. You need to grow up. Children need education, need chinuch. Chinuch, education, Hanukkah, dedication. It's the same thing. Hanukkah is not only a feast of dedication, it's a feast of growing up. It's one... People need to take responsibility for their actions with wisdom, with understanding. When I become a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in mirror enigmatically, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, or I will, I will know. Even I have been known, but now three things remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of them is love. It says left hand is under my head, the right hand embraces me. That means face to face. When it's all said and done, the spirit and the bride, they say, come. The Messiah who rose on the eighth day expects nothing left, less than complete purity and dedication from us. There can be no other he is the only one, the Son of God, God of God. How can there be any other between us? How can there be in any other in the room? We're completely set apart for him in righteousness and holiness. Anything that comes from us, any com anything that comes from our own initiative, it's suspect. We don't know. Our own desires, who knows how kosher <laughs> they are, how pure. It's being filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. It's being filled with the power from heaven that accomplishes the will of God. The power of resurrection accomplishes that in our lives. The spirit that rose the Messiah from the dead is the same spirit that's working in us to also that we may also share in the resurrection, who reminds us that we are children of the promise, that even though we have been adopted, we have full rights and privileges as children. Let us not forget that. And keep our eyes on the prize. Amen. Thank you, Father, and bless you, Lord, for all your goodness and loving kindness for, your, for us today and every day. Lord, we thank you that even this world is, is, seems like it spins out of control and the bottom has dropped from beneath. There's no end in sight to 
kinds of horrors. Perhaps they're far away, but who knows? It can be even close tomorrow. God forbid, but we are not. You know, there's no guarantee. But there is a guarantee, Lord, that you will hold the beloved ones in your hand. That those that have understanding would know what to do and continue purifying themselves. Without which purity, there's no one, no one is able to, to see God and enter into your presence. We thank you, Lord, for, your, for the portion that has been given to us. The privileges of adoption that has been extended to us by grace through faith. For which we hope. And the hope will not disappoint because the love of God is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, and we bless you. In Yeshua's name.